Hi, Big Tractor Power fans. This video comes to you from a Western Kentucky cornfield where a 510 bushel Class 8 Lexian 8600 Terra Track Combine is harvesting the crop. This machine is powered by a 12.8 liter MAN D26 diesel engine rated at 483 horsepower. This combine is equipped with a Drago GT 12 row 30 inch corn head and it is processing over 6,000 bushels of corn per hour. Let's climb up in the cab of this 8600 Lexion and see what it's like to operate it. As I come up the stairs, I'd like to point out, everybody asks, where is this machine built? It's built right in Omaha, Nebraska. And as we come up to the cab door, you can see that American flag right there. Proudly, uh, proudly assembled in the USA. Let's take a ride. Hey, Hi, Justin. Doing, Jason? Good to see you. Likewise. I really like this new combine. Appreciate you coming out. I'm up in the cab of the 8600. It's an impressive machine, a lot of technology, and I'm here with Justin Jones from my local Kloss dealer, Boyd. And there's um, a lot of new features in this machine. Hey, we'll start off here. Um, everything is now a touch screen all the way through for anything that we're wanting to do. You do it, do it off the touch screen, um, which is a huge change from what we've had in the past. But as you're going, if you want to change your cylinder speed, concave settings, you hit here. You want to change your rotor, you hit here. You want to change your sieve settings, you set here. You want to change your fans, you hit, hit in this area and they'll bring it up. Where you can where you can change what you need to. Of course, I'm not running right now, so nothing is activated. Waiting on Arger Cart Wagon guy to get back to us. We'll do a little start up. All right. As the combine heads out across the field, we can see the 31-foot unloading auger move out into position to unload 5.1 bushels of corn per second from this machine's 510 bushel grain tank. It's unloading into a 1,000 bushel Brent 1082 grain cart operated by a 400 engine horsepower Challenger MT-775E track tractor. The combine's grain tank is empty and Justin has shut off the unloading system. The unloading auger continues to run for an additional 10 seconds to ensure that every kernel of corn has cleared the auger and landed in the grain cart. This avoids spilling unnecessary bushels out under the field as the auger swings back into the folded position. speed are we running with this 12 row uh, Drago head? I mean, right now we're 4, 5, 2, 5, 3. We're using 55% of, of the engine power. Uh, we're 20 and a half percent moisture corn and we're bouncing between 170. The top end I've seen today is around 230. But I've never seen my engine power get over 65% used. Well, that's so impressive. We turn the unload auger on, it, it gains a, an additional 30% of, of power. This big man engine just does not know when to when to stop with this machine. Now those MAN engines are 
They're tough. Absolutely. This same displacement, same engine that's in the Fiat 1000, so we're, we're very familiar with them. They're low RPM, high torque engine, and they just, they do not give up. They're, they're amazing on the torque curve. Now is this um, combine, is it automated, is it able to adjust, you said you're bouncing between 187 up to 230 in the field in different spots, so is it adjusting for that crop coming through? Yeah, so I'll, I'll use my, my ink pen so I don't don't touch my string. Sure. Alright, so you see the big A, right there go and touch the edge of it. Uh, you, you see the big A there, the big A there, it's showing that everything inside of this threshing system is self-adjusting as we're going and, and the conditions are changing. So when we started today, we were in 23% moisture form. We've been down to 17 and a half. It, it's all over the board because we've got two different varieties here with, with replant mixed in because we lost some, some of the water damage here. So the self-automation is really taking the stress off of, off of the operator. I've got cruise pilot set, so it's watching my, my tailings to turn, my percentage of grain in, in tailings, my rotor loss, my sieve loss, my engine horsepower, and the, the thickness of the crop mat going underneath the drum. And it's actually driving itself and adjusting itself. So all we have to do is keep it between the corn, corn rows right now. Here we come up to the, the headland. Trucks are parked here a little bit close. We'll, we'll see what we can do about getting around them. They really increased the, the steer on this machine by, by adding additional camber to the to the steer axle. So the tires don't run flat when you're in full steer. As you can see, I almost there, but yeah. It's a nice tight turn, you know, the tracks, you don't even feel them. I, when I've ridden in other competitive models, it kind of had that triangular track, you really feel it on the turn, and this is so smooth. Well, again, Claw's track design is designed for a low packing track, where everybody else that, that has a track design is a low pulling track design. So these tracks are actually designed to, to hold up and lift a load they're not designed for, for heavy tillage, pulling, or pan tooling, or pulling. They're, they're really designed just for a combine and what we're doing with them. They're not a, a wheel fit track assembly, if you will. Driving it down here, I was able to hold 26 and a half mile an hour on the road, and going downhill, I got up to 27.4 mile an hour on it. Um, they're amazing on the road, and, and of course, they're a great ride in, in the field as well. One thing I've noticed is the way they go through ruts and ditches, and they just kind of glide through them. And then if you get a wet fall, you know you're still you're on the surface where the triangular tracks kind of just rutted up like a tire. This kind of keeps the combine above above the soil, not sinking in, leaving big ruts. Absolutely, the pivot point is actually set forward uh, 20 percent from equal. So so we've only got 40 percent of the weight on the front idler, 60 percent of the weight on the rear idler or the drive wheel, and whenever it starts sinking in mud, um, the tracks pivot up and they're always continually to trying to, to drive up out of the mud. Everybody else that has the triangular tracks, when they go into the mud, it actually rocks back and the front idler of that track assembly is pushing down into the mud, trying to make it dig deeper, trying to find hard bottom. Where Klaus is the only one that's actually pointed up and it's trying to pull us up out of the mud and, and get back on top of the ground, not find hard bottom. Now, with this combine's capacity as we're cruising across this field, you know, 510 bushel, what, what's its threat? I mean, how many bushels are you putting out an hour? Uh, right now, we're holding right at 6,000. Right here's our wet bushel. So we're holding right at 6,050 bushel an hour out of it. And again, we're using 70% engine load here, 65, 70%, and just cruising. Um, we definitely got more capacity, but at five mile an hour, we're, we're running out of dryer space and, and semis to haul away from it. So we're right. just cruising. Well, there was a lot of trucks here today, and it's uh, just eating up these acres. I, absolutely. Um, I don't have a total, total bushel. Um, 
course the wet weight there it isn't accurate we did a calibration third of the way through today but we definitely pushed the bushels through and as we turn right at the end rows you can see what all we've we've been through and and when you go behind the machine and you dig out a one foot square the most i've been able to find is two kernels i've never found a one foot square behind this machine with with more than two kernels so we're somewhere around that that 0.21 to 0.25 bushel loss out of it oh even a 510 bushels we still have cap corn <laughs> absolutely i just realized uh we we are full As the 8600 is working its way across the field, let's take a look at how it spreads a residue. The Drago header is snapping off the ears of corn and crunching up the stalks, and then the cobs and husks are working their way through the rotary system in this combine, and it does a great job in cleaning, producing a nice sample, but it's also spreading this residue out, which is helpful. Here in Western Kentucky, a lot of this ground is planted into winter wheat after the harvest. And we can see how it's breaking up these cobs. I mean, it's just absolutely obliterating them as it's going through the combine. Also, if we clear back this residue, you know, they're just, there's not a lot of anything on the ground except for the residue. Not a lot of grain at all. We can keep on sweeping back here. So there's uh, one kernel right there, but there's just not anything else on the dirt, which is good. And certainly they can take a sample and look at the square footage and see how much is not caught by the combine. But as you can see, just from that sweep right there, not a lot is left. It's all going in the bin. industry-leading 510 bushel capacity of the 8600 Lexian Combine and the other Kloss 8000 series machines including the 8700 and 8800 sold in North America are massive in appearance when they're out in the field. When it's time to move down the road to start harvesting the next crop, this combine folds into a nice low-profile machine to transport with ease under trees and other obstructions that can be encountered along the road. Here we can see with a flip of a switch the bin folds down flat with the profile of the combine's cab roof.
I hope you've enjoyed spending some time out in the field and up in the cab of the Kloss Lexian 8600 Terratrack Combine. Does your farming operation use Kloss Lexian Combines? I'd like to hear about them in the comment section below. Let me know the model that you're running and the crops that you harvest with it. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there's over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. As always, thank you for watching. 